Hello everyone and welcome to another Miniature Monday. I'm Scott and today we are going to paint some tabletop terrain using cheap craft paints. Let's take a look at the model. This impressive piece of scenery is the Abandoned Lighthouse by EC3D Designs and was printed using my Ender 3. It came as part of their Depths of the Savage Atoll Kickstarter, which you may recall from our earlier Dock and Shipwreck videos. This model was also released as a free sample to the public on Thingiverse, and I will put a link in the description below if any of you are interested in making one of your own. The lighthouse prints in several pieces, allowing for a fully playable interior on each floor. We have quite a lot of surface area to cover here, so after a quick coat of grey filler primer to smooth out those print lines, we are ready to get to it. As I said, for this model we are going to be using cheap craft paints rather than our standard dropper bottles. These are all craft smart acrylic paints that I picked up from Michaels. You can find similar brands at any hobby or dollar store. Just remember, the keyword you are looking for when picking these up is acrylic. Before we get started, we are going to have to thin this paint down. You can see here that as it comes out of the bottle, it is pretty darn thick. Even as I move my palette around, it doesn't seem to want to drip at all. Now this is easily remedied with a little water and an applicator, for which I am using a dropper. Now I'll admit I went a bit overboard with my water and ended up with a pretty thin consistency. It took me a few tries before I got this down, but eventually I figured it out. Luckily, I have plenty of paint to spare. On to the actual painting. This first color that I am putting down is dark gray, and we will be using this to cover the stone walls, both interior and exterior, on all five levels of the lighthouse. And that's pretty much everything but the roof and the flooring on the first floor. Next, for all of the exterior wood, we are going to use brown. Not earthen brown, not aged treant, nope, just good old brown. This is going to cover the wooden door frame on the first floor, the support beams on the second to last floor, and the roof of the lighthouse. Now we are going to use deep grey to break up the colouring on the outside of the lighthouse and paint the stones that frame the three windows on the third floor, both inside and out. In addition, we are going to hit the bolts on the top wooden frames, the hinges on the front door, and while we're at it, go ahead and paint the brazier on the roof. Moving to the interior, we are going to go back to our brown and paint in the ladders going from floor to floor. Now using gray, just gray, we are going to paint the stone flooring on the ground floor. Although it is a subtle difference from the walls, this is going to highlight the weathering that would have naturally occurred over years of people walking on the stone. Now the front door is looking a bit one-dimensional, and to help with that we are going to use black to paint behind where the door is hanging from its hinges, to look as though a dark entryway waits behind. And to finish our base layers, we are going to use golden brown to paint the floorboards on each level. Again, this lighter color is going to add to the story of the wear and tear that the interior would have seen over time. One trick I found useful during this step was to use a fine detailed brush to paint the areas where the floor met the walls. This saved me a lot of time in cleanup later on. And with the flooring finished, we have completed our base layering on our abandoned lighthouse.
and there we are. There's still a lot of work to do, but with the paints that we were using, this is not bad quality. So let's talk about these paints for a second. First off, there was a bit of a learning curve, but once I figured out how much water to add to get the consistency that I was used to working with, I mean, we were off like a flash. Now, I don't know if I would use this to paint tabletop minis, like characters or NPCs, but as far as terrain goes, I mean, the quality is comparable and the quantity is clearly a lot more. <laughs> Uh, I think in just grays alone, I went through about a quarter of a bottle of one of these, whereas I probably would have gone through an entire dropper bottle, and yeah, so for large terrain pieces, I might switch over and start just using these craft paints. The biggest thing that I noticed was I felt limited in my choice of colors, but I think that's just for me not having enough of a stock to go and pick out something new, so I might just run to the store later today and see what I can find. I'm pretty excited to see what this is going to look like with washes and that is going to be our next video so be sure to check in as we uh, create a wash to put on this so thank you all so much for watching if you like this video please hit that like button and hit subscribe right here if you'd like to watch more of my miniature monday videos you can click right over here if you'd like to watch more videos on the channel you can click right over here thank you all once again i'm scott and i will see you at the next miniature monday